Unfortunately, I'm running late from time to time. If you hang out with me a lot, you may think it's a bit more than from time to time. I'm not proud of it. I mainly think it's because I'm trying to cram way too much into one day. But I always say it's better late than never, and the Scorpion Micro may be a little late, but it's here now and it's going to make some big waves for such a little gun. In case you've been living under a rock or just woke up from a coma in the past year, the Micro Scorpion is a shorter, more compact version of the wildly popular full-size Scorpion Evo. CZ didn't just cut the barrel down to 4 inches and wait for droves of fanboys to get in line to buy their new shorter Scorpion. They work with some other industry juggernauts to deliver a smaller package Scorpion that has some custom features that make this model excel on its own, while still maintaining some of the great features of the full-size Scorpion. So starting in the back, you'll have a brace that is badge CZ but looks suspiciously like an SB Tactical product to me. It sits on back of these two rails that collapse to either side of the Scorpion, much like that of an MP5. This is accomplished with an adapter made by Manicore Arms, a company that makes a lot of phenomenal aftermarket parts for a wide variety of guns, including the CZ Scorpion Evo. Up front, you'll have an M-Lock handguard that is made by HB Industries, another company that makes a lot of great aftermarket parts for the Scorpion, and I'm running a lot of their parts on my full-size Scorpion. The handguard houses the Silencer Co. No Osprey Faux Suppressor attached to the 4-inch barrel underneath the handguard. This thing looks really cool and is dimensionally the same as a real Osprey except in length. The real Osprey is longer and how much longer depends on which Osprey model you get. In a minute, I'll show you how to take the faux suppressor off and list a bunch of suppressors that fit in the handguard and a few that we found that didn't. In the middle, the guts are all the same Scorpion we've come to love. It has ambi controls that mimic both the AR-15 and an MP5, so if you're familiar with either system, you'll be able to flawlessly transition into the Scorpion. It has a forward non-reciprocating charging handle that can be locked into the up position and slap charged like an MP5. Or you also have a bolt release in a position similar to an AR-15 that can also be used on reloads. The mag release is kind of a take on a paddle that can either be hit with your trigger finger or released with the thumb of your weak hand from either side of the gun. The safety can be used from either side of the gun, which is great, but it does dig into my finger a bit. This is an easy fix that I've already addressed on my full-size Scorpion, and this one will probably get a similar treatment. The grip for me is something that I just don't quite get. It's the only thing on the gun I'm really not a fan of, but again, it's an easy swap that I'll definitely be addressing on this Scorpion as well. The good news is, is that there are more and more aftermarket parts for the Scorpion all the time, and really bringing the platform to the next level. I've already said that Manicore Arms and HB Industries have some great parts, as well as Yeti Works, and now it even looks like Magpul is getting in on the game. The great thing about the design is CZ made it fairly modular and simple, so making changes is fairly easy, allowing the user to upgrade and customize the Scorpion to their personal liking. You know what else is great about the Scorpion? It just works. It flat out works. At this point, we've probably only run about 250 rounds through it, but that's already been supersonic, subsonic, hollow point, suppressed, and unsuppressed, and the thing just flat out runs. No excuses, no finickiness, it just runs whatever you give it, however you want to run it, with no issues whatsoever.
You know what else is great about the Scorpion? It's probably more accurate than you are. I was a little worried that the shorter barrel might lose some of that amazing accuracy I got out of the full size, but that doesn't seem to be the case. With a 4 inch barrel on the second magazine ever through the gun, we were easily hitting steel targets at 100 yards. I was pretty impressed with that, until the next day when we shot that 4 inch 9mm out to 200 yards with relative ease. We even got a couple shots on target at 200 yards with subsonic ammunition. This thing is crazy accurate even in this new micro variation. It's important to note that the barrel actually ends about three quarters the way down the handguard, so you'll always need either the faux suppressor or a real suppressor installed to shoot the gun, or you could damage the inside of the handguard and possibly your hand for that matter. To remove the faux suppressor, first you'll need to undo these four T25 screws on either side of the handguard and the handguard itself will come right off. Then you have this weird nut on the end of the barrel. We initially used a shotgun choke wrench to remove this. There may be something better to use but it worked and a fair warning there was a pretty good amount of Loctite or rock set holding it on. So using the side of this AR-15 wrench like I'm using right now won't work for the initial removal. Once you get that off, you can remove the parts of the fake suppressor and see the barrel with its half by 28 threads. Okay, so basically the inside of this handguard measures 1.57 inches, and as long as your suppressor of choice doesn't exceed that, it should work just fine. While I was still at Nichols Outfitters, we tried the Osprey and it fit. The Silencer Co. Omega 9K fits, as well as the Dead Air Ghost, and those are the two suppressors you see being shot in the video. Sadly, my beloved Dead Air Wolf does not fit, and the only other suppressor that we found that didn't fit was the Black Hawk Mini Boss. Most 9mm suppressors don't exceed that diameter, and as long as they don't, you shouldn't have any problem getting them on the Scorpion Micro. The Osprey does look the best in my opinion, however to remove that particular suppressor due to the shape, you would have to take the handguard off every time. I'm still debating how I'll run my Scorpion Micro, but I've had the idea of blue lock tighting on a 3 lug muzzle device, then I could easily attach and remove suppressors without ever having to take the handguard off. But I'm going to think on it a little bit, and I do really like the looks of the Osprey. I just think the 3-lug would be very practical. I'm also going to make some more little changes to the grip and the safety. So in about a month, we'll have a full 1,000 round review on the Scorpion Micro, and we can see what kind of changes I come up with. Basically, you have an amazingly accurate, unbelievably reliable gun with great ergonomics that you won't have to put a second mortgage on the house to get. Plus, it comes with some killer upgrades, and then there's a great and growing aftermarket support for this platform, so you can further customize the gun to your liking. CZ has another big win on their hands, and I think the Scorpion Micro is a great addition to anyone's collection, whether it's your first sub gun or just another one on the pile. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I picked up my Scorpion Micro at Nichols Outfitters. Nichols Outfitters is one of the country's largest CZ dealers, and they get way more CZ than anybody else. They've got CZs like other gun shops have Glocks. If you're interested in getting your own Scorpion Micro, the best thing to do is probably give them a call and get on the waiting list, because they're more than likely going to get it way before anybody else. Guys, we got some really big reviews in the works, so if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. It helps us out a lot, and you'll get notified when we have a new video up. You want to know what we're currently reviewing? Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You can see what we're currently shooting way before it hits YouTube. 
If you want to help support Alabama Arsenal, the best possible way to do that is through Patreon. And we also now have gear available, so if you want to go out and represent, you can. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching.